What's up guys? How are you doing? I hope you're good. Welcome to yet another amazing story today where we are going to cover object-based image analysis or OBIA in Quantum GIS. So as you see here on my screen, I have a very high resolution image array here and then I have been able to use OBIA to classify this image. Just watch this tutorial to learn how you can do this too and don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit that like button. Let us dive into the tutorial. So the first thing is to create a new project, my project here, and then I'll save it as obia chujis. So after creating the new project, you open layer, add layer, Add raster layer. So guys, as you can see here, I have added my raster file here, as you can see. It's a very high resolution image, as you can see it. So these are trees, these are houses, there are some roads. And then you can see we have some grass here. Yeah, so today I'm going to be able to carry out OBIA on these high resolution imagery. So to proceed, what you have to do is to first define the number of classes you are going to work with. Remember when we are going to do a classification, the first thing we should always consider is the classification scheme. How many classes are you going to consider? And then what are the components of each class? And then for this tutorial, I have been able to declare and decide the number of classes here. Let me show them to you. My first class is called the buildings. My second class is called the trees. My third class is called grass. My fourth class is called road. And then my fifth class is called bare ground. So after defining your classes, the next thing you are supposed to do is to select training samples for your what? For your algorithm. So what you do, you go to layer, create layer, new shape for your layer. And then you select the name of this layer, it will be sample. And then the geometry type, it is a point. Yeah, I'll leave it in DALI JS84. And then I'll add a new attribute, which is called class ID. And then class ID is a whole number. And then after that, I click OK. So using this shape file, I'm going to be able to sample in each of my classes here, as you see, I'm going to select points that represent buildings, trees, grass, the roads, the bare ground. And then actually, I'm going to be able to give each one of those points a distinguishing class ID attribute, as you see. For the buildings, it will be one, the trees two, the grass three, the road four, and then the bare ground five. And then depending on the number of classes you have considered, you can choose the class ID. But however, make sure that you select a minimum of 30 samples for each class. So let me add features as you see, yeah. So after some time, as you see, I've been able to add a number of features. Let me open the attribute table. And then for each feature, I have been able to give it a unique class ID. As you see, one represents the buildings, two the trees, three the grass, four the road, and then five the bare ground. Uh, let me scroll down so that you can see my samples. Are you seeing the three, and the four? You're seeing the four and then the fives, yeah. So at this stage, I hope you've already installed the Ophio Toolbox or the OTP plugin. If you have not yet installed that plugin, Kindly check my previous tutorial on how to install this plugin within Quantum GIS. So, after there, you just go to Processing, Toolbox, and then you search for Segmentation, and then you click it here. When you search for Segmentation, make sure it is selected from the options of the OTB plugin. You see this? For me, it will appear here because I have used it previously. So if you have not already used it, it will be here. And then select it. 
And then when you open it, select the input image as this. The segmentation algorithm, I'll use mean shift. Yeah, I'll leave all the other options as default. And I will just tick this. And then I will go down here and then I will select where to save my file. I will save it as, let me save it as segmentation. Segmentation results. And then it is a shapefile. Segmentation results dot shp. And then I click save. After that, I run this. So, as this algorithm is running, uh, depending on your competence and your experience or the type of image you have, you can choose to customize and change these default values in the most appropriate way you want for your analysis. But however, if you are not a more advanced user, I suggest that you leave these options as what? As the default. And then you can learn how to fine tune them as time moves on. Yeah, after running this, so add layer, add vector layer, and then, so navigate to the folder where you have saved your output shape file. As you can see, my output shape file is here, segmentation results, and then open it, and then click add. When you click add, you can see that we have been able to do a segmentation on this image. So what you do is you go to properties and then symbology and then I'll select this hollow symbology and then let me try to, to make this 0.3 then I click apply. When you zoom in, you can be able to see the segments in your image. Yeah, so let me zoom in. Can you see these segments? Yeah. So let me hope this is fine. Yeah. After this step, come to the processing toolbar and then search for zonal statistics. Zonal statistics. Click this zonal statistics and then the input image should be this, the image in which we are interested in. And then the type of input for the zone definitions is vector. And then the input vector data, make sure that you feed in the output result that has been gotten from the segmentation algorithm. And for me, it is my segmentation what? Result shape file. And then let me save this shape file. I'll save it as segmentation statistics. Segmentation statistics and then make sure that you run so after some time your algorithm will finish executing and then as you op open the attribute table here you will see that a number of features have been added like this mean value the standard deviation zero the mean zero the max zero the mean one and a number of parameters. Actually, these are the parameters that we are going to use for our classification, as you'll see in the future. So, after this step, proceed on to, to join and then search join. Click the join attributes by location, and then select the base layer as this segmentation statistics. Make sure that the base layer is the vector file that has been created from what? From computing the statistics. And then the join layer should be these sampled points. And then make sure that the join type, you select a one-to-one -one relationship. And then save the join layer, save it to file as the joined layer. I'll call it joined what? Joined layer. Then click save and then you tick this one, discard records which could not be joined. Make sure you tick it. And then after click, run. So after some time, I've been able to select my parameters or the samples that I'm going to use for what? For training my algorithm. So the next thing is to search for the train vector classifier. Train vector classifier. 
Remember, all these are algorithms that have been incorporated within the OTB plugin. So you search for this train vector classifier and then select it. When you click that, make sure the input vector data, you select the joint layer and then click OK. And after selecting the joint layer, you come here, the field names for training features. So when you open the attribute table of the join layer, you will see a number of what attributes that have been created. So me, I'll use the mean zero, the standard deviation zero, the mean one, the standard deviation one, the mean two, and the standard deviation two. So I'll put mean zero, then standard deviation zero, then mean one, standard deviation one, mean two, then standard deviation two. After that step, if you have a validation data, you can click here and then add it. But since I don't have validation data, you proceed field containing the class integer label. When you open this attribute table, you'll see that my integer label, I've named it as a class ID. So I'll put this as class, class ID. Then I'll leave the rest as what, as default. Of course, the classifier can be lib SVM. You can use decision trees, attrition networks, base, random forest, scale neighbor, and then whatever you want. Then after you come and then select the output of the model, and then you save it to file. Save it as obia model dot model. Yeah, make sure you take note of this extension, the dot model. Yeah, you can save it as any name, but use the dot model. Then after I run it. So it may take some time and then it finishes executing. And the next step is to come still here to the processing toolbox. And then you search for vector what? For vector classifier. You see? I click here the vector classifier. And then they will tell me the name of the input vector data. Make sure that you input the segmentation statistics image, then you open it, and then the model, you browse to the model, my model is OBIA model, yeah, it's a model file, the output field, I leave it as option, and then the field names to be calculated, still, you open this attribute table, and then you you put the mean zero, standard deviation zero, the mean one, standard deviation one, the mean two, and then the standard deviation one also. Then after you select where to save your file. So I'll save my file as classified output shp and then I run it. So after some time your algorithm will run. And let me bring my classified what? My classified output. And then I browse to here and then I select this classified output. And I'll add it and then I click add. Further, I click properties and then I come to labels to symbology actually. And I select categorized. And then I browse here and then the value I select this predicted. And then I classify. Remember, I had chosen five classes. As you see, I've been able to do a classification, but the symbology doesn't look good. So I click on my symbol here, simple fill, and then I select this outline. The width if I make it 0.006. And I click OK, and then I click Apply. Remember that the one was a building, so usually the buildings will give them a red color. Where is my red? Yes. Then the trees, I'll give them a dark green color. Yes, it's here. And then my grass, I'll give it a light green color. This one. And I click. Okay. And then the four, the four represents the road. So the road, I'll give it something like brown. Let me look for brown. Yes. 
and then actually the bare ground I'll give it cyan let me look for cyan okay let me just give it this color then apply so all other values I can untick this and still I click OK then as I apply so as you see this is the output of my segmentation I've been able to classify and actually if you were to compare it with the results of the image array they actually correlate as you can see yeah so after this step you may want to compute areas so what you do is to come to vector geoprocessing tools and then you come to dissolve and then you select this the input layer should be this what this classified output file and then make sure you, you select these dissolve fields and then the fields to dissolve I dissolve what a predicted field then I click OK then I'll save the dissolved layer as dissolved dissolved layer okay and then I run that of course it may take some time depending on how big your study area is and how fast your laptop is so after some time my Arvin was actually executed so I close yeah so after that you click properties then you open attribute table and then you come here to open field calculator but before you open the field calculator you make sure that you are working in a what in a projected what coordinate system so if you're not working in a projected coordinate system you just have to reproject your layer and then make sure you're working in a what in a projected coordinate system yeah. So you come here to layer and then you click open field calculator and then you create a new field and then you call it area. This area is in what? Square meters. And then it will be a decimal number. Then I'll just use this dollar sign and then the area. Yeah. And I just click OK. Actually after some time as you can see I have calculated the area of each class in square meters. So you can proceed to convert this to acres, hectares, and whatever you need. Yeah. So thank you for watching this tutorial. See you then.